Hi, I'm Richard McKenzie, co-author of Microeconomics for MBAs. This video module is going to be concerned with uh, monopsony uh, labor markets. In the past, we've dealt with labor markets in terms of, com of their competitiveness. That is, we've dealt with a labor market that has a downward sloping demand curve and upward sloping supply curve, and there are many employers in the market who are demanding uh, workers, and there are many workers uh, in the market willing to offer their work to the, the employers. In such a, a fragmented uh, labor market, the wage of the that is set by the force of supply and demand can be viewed as a marginal cost of, of labor to individual workers, I mean individual employers. Each employer can figure that it can hire one worker, two workers, three workers, four, whatever, uh, and still not materially affect uh, the wage rate. Why? Because there are so many employers in the market and these employers are all very small relative to the overall quantity of workers that are being hired. As a consequence, uh, each employer is a proverbial uh, drop in the bucket. Uh, the employer can raise its demand for workers, increase the number of people it hires, but that will not materially affect uh, the wage rate. Suppose we move into a market that is totally dominated by one employer. This would be a monopsony monopsony uh, labor market. A monopsony stands as a contradistinction to monopoly. A monopoly is a single seller of a, of a product. A monopsony is a single buyer of, an, of a resource uh, input, such as uh, labor. The monopsony would be facing a upward sloping supply curve that looks like S1. That is, it could hire uh, way down here, quantity uh, Q2, and do so by uh, paying a wage rate of W-2. It can increase its quantity demanded, and, but it would have to uh, raise its uh, wage rate. And it could go up to Q-1 and end up paying W-1 more. The lesson is, that, or the point is, that the monopsony can choose any wage quantity combination uh, that is along uh, this uh, supply curve. If in fact it does that, or is or must adjust the wage to accommodate its, its employment uh, uh, demands, then it's going to affect the marginal cost of, of workers. Here we have a graph in which reflects the supply curve of labor as faced by a, a monopsony. Uh, that is, a monopsony can hire one worker and pay $20,000 a year to that one worker. If it wants to hire two workers, then it must pay each of them $22,000 which means its total wage bill goes from 20 for one worker to 44,000 for uh, two workers. It can hire three and go, but the wage goes up to 24 and total wage bill goes up to 72,000. And so on up the line, at six workers, the, uh, the employer must pay uh, $30,000 uh, in annual wages. Its total wage bill will be $100,000. Well, notice that when it hires one worker, uh, its wage, annual wage, is going to be $20,000. Its marginal cost of, of that worker is going to be uh, $20,000. But when the worker hires, when the employer hires a second worker, and the wage bill for both of them goes up to $22,000, then the marginal cost of that worker goes to uh, $24,000. Why? Because you are paying the second worker $22,000, but you're also having to raise the wage of the first worker by $2,000. $22,000 plus $2,000 gives you a marginal cost equal to $24,000. If the employer hires three workers, then the annual wage is going to be $24,000 for each. Its total wage bill is $72,000. Its um, uh, marginal cost of labor is uh, $28,000. The reason is that it's paying the uh, third worker $24,000, but it's having to raise the wage on the first two workers by $2,000. $24,000 plus $4,000 gives you a marginal cost of $24,000. Well, basically, you can, you can get the uh, marginal cost of workers by subtracting out these, subtracting these two uh, figures. Note that the supply of labor is indicated by columns one and column two. As the wage rate goes up, the number of workers willing to work uh, goes up. The marginal cost of labor is going to be uh, column one and, and column, column four. And uh, at one worker, uh, the, the marginal cost of 
labor is uh, the same as the uh, wage that is that is paid. And but as the number of workers is hired, the marginal cost diverges. Here it's 24,000 versus 22,000, 28 versus 24, 32 versus. And so the gap between the wage that is being paid and the marginal cost of workers is ex increasing until at six workers, the gap is $6,000. This means that if we were to plot the supply of labor curve, uh, we would have an upward sloping curve, as is expected. If we were to plot the marginal cost of labor curve, it would also be upward sloping, but more steeply upward sloping. The two curves would start at the same wage of $20,000, but the marginal cost of workers would, curve would, would rise more steeply. This is what is true in, in this uh, graph. That is, we have the same supply of labor curve that we were talking about earlier. But the marginal cost of labor curve is going to look like this ML sub, I mean MC sub L uh, curve. This is the marginal cost of labor. And the, the monopsony employer is going to have to ask itself, how many workers would it uh, hire if it were trying to maximize profitability? Well, it would, it would weigh off the marginal value of the first worker versus the marginal cost, which is down here, and it would determine that it can make a profit off of that worker equal to that distance. The second worker, the marginal value is not quite as high because of diminishing returns. Its marginal cost is, is higher uh, than uh, is higher because it is having to increase the wage on the uh, uh, first worker. But there's still a gap equal to that vertical distance. Well, we can continue the analysis and see that for every worker up through this quantity right here, uh, those workers uh, can in fact uh, be more, uh, can be profitable because the additional value is greater than the additional cost. The profit to be made on all of these workers is going to be equal to that triangular area or the gaps between the marginal value and the marginal cost. The employer, the monopsony employer is going to hire Q sub M uh, workers. It will not go beyond Q sub M because to do so would reduce profits. The marginal cost would be there. Uh, the marginal value of that worker would be there. As a result, the um, uh, workers beyond QM would not be uh, hired. You can tell from, from the graph that we've been uh, developing that uh, things have gotten pretty messy. In order to make additional points, I'm going to start with a clean slate. 